Hi everyone, welcome back to Lair Academy. It's Mick again, and in this lesson, I wanted to cover caching within Laravel. Now, I know that this is something that I've done previously. However, in the latest version, or a couple versions before the 5.7, Laravel has made some great strides in caching and made it super simple and easy to do. There's no reason why you as developer shouldn't understand caching or how to do it within your Laravel app. Now you might be wondering why you would cache a query or cache something. Well, for instance, right here on this page, I'm showing approximately 15,000 users. This is something that we would probably cache as long as these, these users or this information isn't gonna be updated. If the user is gonna update their information, then I'll have to clear that cache and then recache the values. Not really that big a deal with the way that Laravel works. You might also be caching a report that runs pretty often and the parameters don't change, or you might cache something like an image that you're grabbing from a different server. There's a whole bunch of reasons why you may cache something and this is just the start of it. Now, if we take a look at the example project that I have in front of me, I have some random users and if I hit refresh, you can see it goes off to the distance and then basically once it's done, it will be displayed the 15,000 users. Now that didn't really take that long because I'm not joining on any other tables. If I had another table to join to and grab that information, well then that would start taking quite a long time. But like I said, in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at caching. So let's load up our IDE and see what's actually happening right now. Inside app HTTPs in the controllers, I have a user controller and right here, I'm just grabbing all of the users and I'm ordering by the name and then I'm just making sure I get those records. Then I'm just passing those users into my blade file itself. So how would we cache these users here? Well, I think I've covered this one before, but what we should be using is called a repository. We can actually just make a new folder underneath app, and we will just call this repository, if I could spell that right. And then within this folder, we're gonna make a new file. And in here, I'll just call it user, let's call it users.php. Now we're gonna to have to make sure that we namespace it. So I am within the app slash repositories. And then, the next thing we need to do is start off with our class and we'll call this users and that's just because of our file name here. Now, what do I want my users to do? Normally, I would have something like a method called all and I could pass in an order by and then I'm later down the road, maybe I'll have a method called get and I can pass in the ID. But right now, let's actually just focus on the all method. Now, because of the way that caching works, we need some unique identifier to look up the cache itself. So in situations like this, I may create a constant variable. I'll just call this, uh, yeah, let's call this cache key and let's set it to users and that will be it. Now, I may have another function somewhere in here. Let's make another one called, uh, let's say get cache key, which then I pass in uh, we'll pass in a key itself and all this is going to do is return the constant of the cache key and then I'm going to add onto it a period followed by the key itself. Actually what I'll do is I'll take that key and I'll run str2 upper just so we can kind of standardize and have everything uppercase. Great, so even though we have this here this is just going to be our gateway into the cache itself. So we can kind of ignore this, but it'll be very useful going forward. Now, if we wanted to display all the users, well, let's actually take what we have in our user controller, which is this guy here, and let's first initially put it into our, our repository. So we can clean this up by saying we're just gonna return all the users ordered by the variable that we pass in. Great, now let's make sure we import this. So we'll say use app slash users, or sorry, user, and now in the user controller, we can take out these, sorry, this use statement. We could use app slash repository slash users. And now when we grab this information, all we have to say is I want to access the users repository and I want to call the all function. And now I want to pass in the name itself. Now we made a repository called users 
but I'm using it with a static function call here. How does this work? Well, right now it actually won't. If we try and run this, we're gonna get an error. It says we cannot call a non-static method, even though we're trying to right here. To fix this, we can add the word facades in front of it, and now Laravel will automatically new up this repository class whenever we call it, and then that will allow us to run the all function. Here, let's check it out. If I hit refresh, you can see that now all the users are coming back just like they were before. Okay, so this is great. We're back to where we were before we made the repository. Now, how do we start caching this information? Well, if we switch back to Sublime Text and go to our repository, we know that we now have access to a cache key. So, okay, let's make the key equal to this, get cache key. And the cache key that I'm gonna be using is actually gonna be two. So I'm gonna say, cache key is equal to the word all followed by the variable order by. And I'm going to put this in curly braces just to help PHP figure that out. So if we were to actually die and dump this cache key, let's see what we get here. Now remember that we are ordering it by, oh, we have an unexpected return, so that's mainly missing a semicolon, which is right here. We'll comment that out for now. Let's switch back and do a refresh. So we can have all.name. And that is because we're passing in name as the order by. If I come back here and the user controller and I order by email, now the key is going to be all.email. So the reason why I'm doing this is because maybe a different section or we allow the users to sort. Um, depending on what table fields they click. And, we're, and if we're not using JavaScript, we'll have to have PHP do it. But this will make it so that we don't continuously clear the cache, but specifically for the sorting order, that cache may or may not already exist. So I'm gonna switch it back to name. And now that I have my cache key itself, I need to actually get the final cache key. So if we come back and actually let's kind of just Mm, let's switch these variables. So the key is going to be all dot whatever we pass in, and the cache key is going to use our function and then pass in the key itself. So once again, let's actually take a look at that variable. Let's save everything and switch back to Chrome and refresh, and you can see that now we have users dot all dot name. So this is going to be our access into the cache itself. So to use this, well, like I said, Laravel has progressed in caching a tremendous amount and it makes it super easy for us to do. So instead of saying return the user, all we have to do is say return and I'm gonna access the helper function called cache and then call the function remember. So remember takes three parameters. The first parameter is gonna be our key into the cache, which is gonna be our cache key. And the next parameter is going to be how many minutes or how long or when do we want this cache to expire. I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm gonna pull in carbon. So I'm gonna say use carbon carbon. That allows me to say for the second parameter, I could say carbon now then add minutes. Let's say I cache this for five minutes. So we can even have something like add days, add hours, etc., etc. Carbon just makes it super easy. We don't have to do any math to figure out when it's going to expire. Now the third parameter, this is going to be called, it's a closure, and it's going to be called when the remember function cannot find the key that we're looking for or the cache has expired. So in here, we'll write a new function and what we want to do is we want to pass in the, let me pull this over, we're going to have to pass in this order by a variable just so we can use it because of um, scope. Now all we have to do is say return. What do we want to return? We want to return the user order by and then we'll use our variable order by and we'll say get. Now automatically what's going to happen the first time we run this it is not going to find a cache key and it's going to run this closure here and it's going to return all of the users ordered by whatever we passed in and then when we hit refresh again because hopefully it will be within five minutes it's going to find that cache key and it's just going to return the cache itself so here let's try this 
if we come back and we refresh, we know this is going to go to our database. So this is going to take some time to finish. Now, a lot of this is rendering to the page, but once that's done, if we hit refresh again, hopefully you'll see that it's a lot faster and <laughs> it's a little hard to tell here, but we're not accessing the database or anything like that. For example, let's actually choose one of these emails and make a change. If I load up Tinker, with PHP Arson Tinker, I will grab the first user app, whoops, user where the email is equal to that email there. And I believe it's email address. Nope, so I'm right. And what we want to do is we want to change the name to equal Mickey, and then we will save that information. Now remember, if we do a search, we're looking for this email here. If I hit refresh, this email is, or sorry, this name is going to stay the same, even though it's associated with the email address at the top. Now we know that that didn't go to the database because if I come back and I run PHP artisan cache clear, that's going to clear all of our cache. And if I hit refresh, the first email here that comes back, or sorry, when we look for this email, you can see that it's going to be down here. And this is definitely the email that we have been fooling around with. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an example of caching. And just you can see how easy it is and how simple it is to do now. Again, if we wanted to do something for the get, well, all we could do is make sure that we have our keys in here. So we could say get, and then we might as well say the ID. And then all we have to do is we can copy this return, paste it in here and say, okay, remember the cache key, which will be users.get based on the ID. We'll cache it for five minutes. And if it can't find it, then we want to run this anonymous, or sorry, this closure here using the ID, and we could just say find ID. And let's say we had a whole bunch of relationships. Well, in here, we could also just say, we could load them up. We could say with, or we could say, let's say we have the emails in a different table. And then we could say where the ID equals ID and first. And then what this would do is it would load up the relationship automatically and then it would cache it. So if we have a whole bunch of different relationships, we can load them all once. And then once the cache has kicked in, it automatically goes through and does everything for us. Anyway, this was supposed to be a short video, but looking at the timer, it seems a bit long. I just want to show you how quick and easy and really amazing it is to cache within Laravel now. I would like to thank you for watching and hopefully you learned a few things. Please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. It would really help me out. Thanks again for watching.